Welcome to another video from the DJPodcast.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at three somewhat hidden features that are tucked away in Ableton Live that can help you with your DJing and productions. First thing we're going to talk about in this video is changing the crossfader curve. All you have to do is go over and right click on the crossfader itself and you'll be given a drop down menu of different crossfader curves that you can choose from. In fact, you can even automate this if you're doing an arrangement mix or if you're going back and re-editing your mix to fix some mistakes or create new edits. Feature number two is the channel peak meter. This one is really helpful, especially if you do a lot of recording in to Ableton Live. To access this, you want to go and highlight over one of these bars here that's right above the VU meter for a particular channel. It can be on any channel, including the master channel. You'll see a little double arrow with the line in between, and you're going to click and drag up. Now, as soon as you do that, you're going to see that there's a little peak level meter here. Okay, so let's start a track and see how this works. Got the volume slider down here so it can show you exactly how this is going to work. I'm going to press play. And you can see that it says that the peak is at minus 10.82. If I bring this up a little bit, you'll see that it changes over time to the new peak. Now, if I want, I can always reset this by simply clicking on it. You'll see it has a new value now. Also, if I stop the track and then adjust this, maybe we'll make it a little bit louder. And then once I click play again, the meter is going to reset itself and go to a new peak level. Feature number three is a recording count in time. This is actually really helpful if you're doing multi-track recording into Ableton Live. Let me show you how this would work out. So I'm going to want to record to channel two and I want to record at this point. So I've got my channel arm for recording. I'm going to turn on the global recording button and when I press play, you'll see that it starts playing immediately from that point. Now this can be kind of tricky because if you're trying to line up what you're recording with the song, you have to start playing right away. Well, the recording count in time solves this issue. We'll just delete this clip here, go back to the point we want to start at. Now we're going to go up to the metronome and right click it. You can see I have the option of a count in time. I'm just going to set it to one bar select that. Now when I arm my tracks for recording and press play you'll see that it counts down for one bar and then it starts playing and recording at that point. As I said again this is really great for doing multi-track recording and doing multiple takes so you can line up exactly where you want to start recording and have plenty of time to get your hands ready to actually record that part before it starts playing. Thanks for watching this video on three somewhat hidden features in Ableton Live. If you know of a really cool feature that some people might not know about, please feel free to leave a comment below so that other people can see it and try it out too. And don't forget to check out our website, thedjpodcast.com, for more video tutorials, reviews, and how-tos. Thanks for watching.